Hey there, I'm Jay Harris, joined by our NBA analyst, Chenea Gumbake. How would you evaluate D'Angelo Russell's season? I mean, a tremendous season. This guy is an all-star, and I think that Brooklyn has been the best place for him. If you look at what he has done so far this season, uh, he's had to shoulder a lot of the load without Karis LeVert, the rising, you know, little star that right. people discovered this year. Without Spencer Dinwiddie, who, like Karis LeVert, was out many games to injury, he shouldered the load. Not only has he become an all-star, a leader, uh, he's also become a most improved candidate in the NBA, upping his scoring average by almost six points. So if you look at D'Lo, he's having a tremendous season. It'll be interesting to see if the Nets, you know, they get into the postseason, mm -hmm. what he'll do there. He missed nearly half of the 2017-2018 season after knee surgery. Uh, how surprising is this bounce back season? considering well, he's, where he's averaging career highs in points and assists. Not surprising to me because I think he had arthroscopy, like a scope surgery, and that's more of a commonplace clean up, tune up your knee right. type of surgery. You're speaking to someone who had microfracture surgery and left Achilles surgery. Uh, he took his time. As an athlete, that's the number one thing you want. You want to be 100% when you get back on the court. Guess what? He's 100%. He has a system that works. He has a guy in Sharm Marks that believes in him. He has a coach, Kenny Atkinson, that believes in him. This is the best situation for D'Angelo so coming off of that injury. He is only 23 years old. Yeah, um, we forget that. Yeah, what are your thoughts on the Lakers maybe letting him go too soon? I know there's like, it's like your, your ex is over there and they're looking really good, but guess what? I think this is the right move for the Lakers because it takes a lot to be able to be successful from the jump as a rookie in L.A., right? Uh, I'm thinking about people like Kobe Bryant or Magic Johnson that were able to take the distractions of Hollywood and have superseded them because of their skill level, being once-in-a-generation type of player. It takes a lot for a guy like D'Angelo Russell to be in that situation where there are a lot of distractions. On the court, he had the Kobe Bryant retirement circus. Off the court, he had the social media issues. Um, and then you even think about the transitional period he had with the front office, new leadership coming in. A lot to deal with as a rookie especially in Hollywood, where you're pretty much a celebrity before you establish yourself. But now we're seeing what the best version of D'Angelo Russell is, and I think we're all liking that, even though it's in Brooklyn. He's a restricted free agent this summer, cap hold of over $21 million, which directly eats at the team's cap space on a max, a max free agent. Um, is he worth the max deal, in your opinion? So the best version or the best outcome here, in my opinion, is to be able to maintain D'Angelo Russell, even if that means being a restric restricted free agent, someone matches his offer, right, mm -hmm. the Brooklyn Nets. You want to maintain D'Lo, and then you want to sign one of these guys, KD, Kawhi, Kyrie, all of the Ks, Klay Thompson, Kemba. You want to have D'Lo, and you want to have another free agent, because otherwise, you lose D'Lo, and then you're gambling on being able to secure two of those. I don't know if that's going to happen in Brooklyn. So in my opinion, the best outcome is having D'Lo, also having this new free agent that you're able to coax and lure, and then you also have Spencer Dinwiddie on a guaranteed deal, and that core is the best version of Brooklyn Nets you can have in the future. Chatting D'Angelo Russell with Chanae Gumake. Thank you, Chanae.